Um, Avi Friedman, um, I'm one of the co-founders and I run Kentic. I am a non-recovering network nerd back from starting an ISP in 1992 in Philadelphia and being at AboveNet and, and Akamai and I've dealt with in and for uh, many service providers and uh, thrilled to be talking to the audience here. I'm um, gonna give a brief overview at a high level about Kentic. Unfortunately, I will not be the one doing any demos today, but I promise we will have demos um, and we will uh, answer questions interactively. So um, the life of the network of the uh, networker um, often is um, the network sucks. What's going on? And um, that was complaints around that were what led us to start Kentic um, back in 2014, even a couple of years before it. Um, I was at Akamai. I had thought this is all solved problems, and then I left and discovered it was segregated appliances and software um, and not really as modernized as some of the application level tooling had become. So, um, you know, was really thinking about the, again, sort of where how the web scale companies think, which is collect the data, aggregate it, be able to answer questions. And I was surprised about what the state of things is. You know, the goal of Kentic is to be able to take lots of kinds of telemetry, and I have a slide on that so we can talk about lots of different telemetry, um, and be able to bring it together, keep the data, don't throw it away, enrich it with uh, what it means so you don't have to scry at IP addresses and be able to answer operational questions. And in the service provider world, sometimes those are really business questions. Who's using my competitor? Um, what's the cost of, you know, my which customers are using a lot of my international transport? Things like that, that the network can really tell you if you can, if you can take that data and use it. Um, where we were was lots of squinting. Um, specifically when we started Kentic, I heard lots of people using many um, curse words about something called managed objects in Arbor Networks, which was basically like SAT prep. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to ask this question, and then you may learn about that question. But then if you didn't tell it the question, you basically couldn't figure out the answer. You know, you could just look at real time. Um, you know, so back then when we started, things tended to be more segregated, lots of rollups rather than keeping data, because this is really pre-big data and, and SaaS, not much integration um, and, uh, you know, relatively simple alerting. And when we started, we talked with, transit providers, hosting providers, cloud providers, eyeball networks, as well as web companies and enterprises. And everyone sort of seemed to have the same problem. You know, we decided to start around the internet and move into WAN data center cloud, um, just because the internet was really complex. Uh, but fundamentally, we think networks are networks, whether they're your network, someone else's network, SD-WAN, internet, cloud, it's all network, the application depends on it. Um, you should bring that all together you should be able to answer questions. You should be able to um, look multidimensionally. You should be able to figure out what's what customer traffic or application and, you know, integrate. Um, so um, to bring that together, it's telemetry. We don't do all the kinds of telemetry, but I have a slide on that. But, you know, as a vision that we think ultimately, you know, everything is important that comes off the network. Enriching it is really important you know, whether that's with BGP or threat feeds or customer ID or application, and then being able to use it both in the UI, and we'll show you some of that, and to be told, hey, something interesting is happening, you should look at, and we'll show you some of that too. Um, so, you know, ultimately our goal is for everyone to be able to, when it is an issue, um, you know, point it out, test it up, um, give other teams the ability to understand uh, when there are network issues, and if not, um, be able to quickly get back to why people hire us, which is to write test plans, right? Um, or do architecture and uh, run, you know, do installations and run things. Um, the Kentic platform is a platform, so it's SaaS. We have a lot of different functionality, um, ultimately taking telemetry in, running as a platform with an API, and then um, whether it's for people running WANs or data centers or cloud or service provider, which we'll, which we'll focus on today, um, we have a lot of different functionality um, all on top of one platform because it's all the same, you know, telemetry underneath. Um, we do have a, a number of, of service provider customers, about half of our customers are service providers, again, ranging from the largest CDNs, transit networks, cloud companies, hosting companies. Um, and so, you know, our view, we're proud to be servicing the people that make the infrastructure. And then on the enterprise side, those are the people that really use it to drive, uh, to drive daily life. So quick intro into uh, who we are, where we are from, and then just a little bit about telemetry so you can think about the kinds of data that Kentic takes. Um, I have always been a datavore, an infovore, like give me more data, more data is better. Like um, 
I should have put a slide in, um, like uh, short uh, uh, number five from Short Circuit. You know, need input, more input. Um, we started with traffic, which is all the different kinds of flow-ish things, down to sensors, up to NetFlow and SFlow, and then really even over to web logs and 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 eBPF and things like that. From devices, streaming telemetry, and SNMP. Um, today. We really focus on IF, MIB, CPU type stuff, but we're, I'll, I'll show you in the roadmap, we're, we're going deeper there. Metadata has always been a big focus for us. As I said, enrichment, adding BGP, being able to identify customers by your community strings if you're a transit network or by uh, your CMDB or NetBox integration, things like that. Um, performance testing, which we've added so that you can you know, really integrate the two things together and say, hey, something is bad performance, but I have no traffic there. Maybe I don't really care. Um, and then lots of integrations. Just if you think about a modern SaaS big data platform, that's what Kentuck is, you know, underneath. We also have a fire hose. You know, we really, from the very beginning, have thought it doesn't make sense to be standalone. You know, as, as ambitious as we are, we don't think we're going to do everything, you know, anytime soon at least. So everything that comes into Kentuck post-enrichment, you can send to other systems. We have integrations with New Relic and S3 buckets and CSV and Splunk and Datadog and whatever people want, we can slice and dice it. And this is an area that we're exploring as a tech area because a lot of our customers are saying, hey, how do we take these telemetry, put it on a bus? So K-Translate, which is underneath that, actually is something that you can use to take Syslog, reduce it, send it to Splunk. NetFlow, send it to Kentic somewhere else. We're really building a generic telemetry bus and we're doing it in the open. Um, the parts that we're doing where we're innovating around the inputs to Kentic is part of something we call Kentic Labs. We're doing that as open source. It's driving integrations with the observability players. You can check it out at Kentic Labs. Um, you know, where we have come from, as I said, started more internet, more traffic centric. We've been building broadly across the stack and up the stack really to see into applications, but we're not trying to be an APM company um, today. So what's new over the last year or two, um, KMI we're gonna talk about today is business data from BGP. Um, we've done a lot to basically in the platform with maps and link sharing and just helping a whole enterprise or service provider enterprise to be able to use Kentic well um, bringing in um, uh, cloud, um, traditional networks, performance testing, being able to do all those things. That's something that's been a big focus of ours. And then we'll talk about some of the workflows that we have, which are designed to make it so that if what you do is audit bills or what you do is capacity planning, we have the ability to do that so you don't have to write programs or pull up dashboards. You can just, uh, you have something that will tell you here are the things that you should look at. So it's sort of our take on human automation is let's the computer's job is to make it less boring for the humans to do their things and and you know less error prone. Where we're going, full MIB, you know, full full streaming telemetry, be able to integrate that, do more predictive. It's something our customers have been pushing us on in both service provider and enterprise. Um, being able to you know correlate with config push and and really just syslog at events. Um, we've been doing a lot on the cloud native side. And we're seeing that demand both in service provider and enterprise, you know, especially at the edge and people want to deploy more cloudy apps, but then they've got a range of CNIs connecting things, you know, different network architectures and, and you know, want to understand what's going on. Um, really adding a lot of focus on giving network level insights that talk about what applications might be affected. So again, someone can say, uh, this doesn't really matter. I don't need to, you know, get up out of bed and deal with it. Um, some cloud topology stuff. And then, as I said, on Kentic Labs, telemetry bus, um, free projects for basically running host agents and making it look like flow logs, reducing Amazon bills, connecting systems together. All the ingest stuff is, are, those are things that we're working on in the open. So these are far from complete lists, just wanted to give people a high level. And then one other thing that can be helpful for thinking about Kentic is um, we have a running negative roadmap. Now that's not fixed forever. You can see synthetic monitoring and cloud monitoring used to be things that were, you know, hey, you should look elsewhere. Um, you know, right now we're not eyeing config management, you know, deeper IGP analytics other than BGP, um, uh, you know, database, wireless. There's just things that we, we say, let's partner, you know, let's take data in, let's take data out. Um, we're really focused on the core layer two, layer three applications, uh, sorry, networks, understanding those applications just in terms of impact and then the full breadth, cloud, on-prem, internet, um, 
you know, all, all the different ways we build and run networks. So um, I was wondering if you could talk at a high level on how you integrate this type of solution with the front end, you know, the knock, the ticketing, et, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So what's the, what's the type of interfaces you recommend and how, what's the best practices in, in getting this information in front of the people that can do something about it? Yeah. So there's a couple of ways. So in Kentic, we have built-in integrations with PagerDuty and ServiceNow. And really, in some ways, in the enterprise, at least, ServiceNow is the number one automation system that our customers use in terms of like, hey, something happened, go look at it. So we can just take things that we think are anomalies and send them right in. Um, we can provide context to call back and say, you know, so someone could put in a ticket a link to go back and say what, what you think is wrong. Um, and you know, do that in an automated fashion. So we have built-in integrations for that. For some things like DDoS defense, which is very big in service providers, we have complete integrations with uh, Radware and A10 and cloud service providers and cloud like Cloudflare. So that can all be automated as well. For really more knock integrations and SIM and things like that, some of those things get into using the firehose. So we can actually take, um, and I, I could have put a slide in here, but if you Google Kintic Firehose KB, um, you'll see you know, how to use it. That can take the stream of data, filter it, and send it into a SIM. So you can have something around that event and send it into that SIM. We have a Grafana plugin. So if the NOC uses Grafana, you can use a Grafana to pull directly from our backend, or you could use the Firehose to do rollups out of Kintic, because that's not really how we're focused, but you could, you could do those defined SAT prep queries that I talked about and push them into whatever system you want that's a time series system, Influx, Prometheus. Um, you know, we see Datadog less in the network, but um, whatever. So, you know, some built-in integrations from a data perspective, try to make it so you can send any subset you want. And I don't know if you have any other, you know, kinds of integrations uh, that you're curious about. Um, so I think in the headlines for networking, we've seen some pretty high profile outages. Uh, and it's kind of from, you know, DDoS is one aspect of a threat vector in a network, but it's also like, it's coming from inside the house. Like me personally, I made changes on the network that has forked things. Mm -hmm. um, has there been any discussion within Kentik about having sort of, uh, you know, changes done on the network? What does the changes look like pre and post? Maybe not even emulated in a separate environment like mm -hmm. Batfish, but what is it, you know, what, how many BGP prefixes am I sending to a peer? before and after a change. Is that something that you're looking for? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, if we have time at the end, we have the man that can see the internet on the call, uh, Doug Midori, um, and he can talk about outages. And um, we may do a best outage panel at Nanog again, because uh, those are always fun. But the goal, of course, as of course, is to reduce them. So, you know, we are in our not this quarter, but you know, relatively short term plan. First step is take in those, you know, changes. Um, you know, so we're starting less with predictive on the, on the outage because we, we're used for that. I mean, you can say capacity planning, what will happen if I move traffic from here to there and the humans can do that sort of manually. But what our customers have said is, Hey, can you give us fast? Like once we tell you we made a change, can you do the before after? And then not wait a week, but just tell us something is different, whether it's, as you said, prefixes or traffic or performance. And so, yes, that is definitely on the short term. Now you can do those things. But today we don't tie to, you'd have to basically have a Python script that would um, you know, be triggered when you make a change to go pull Kentic data. I would say that's a little bit more of our, our web companies are the biggest segments that do that they, in their network CI, CD, because they're the ones that mostly have it, is they'll go with a life cycle change. Like I turn something off and they'll pull from Kentic performance. They may put it in Slack, they may put it in email, something like that. We don't have that built-in driver because we don't have an opinion about those config changes today. But once we start getting those config and state things, or even just we start seeing sessions flapping, then we can say, does this matter? I mean, not that it doesn't matter, but is something affected? Is there a performance problem? How urgent is this? That's you know something that that is you know up up next dish on the roadmap for us. We've looked at integrating more with Batfish. Um, you know, in particular, um, we tried to talk more with forward networks and Veriflow when they were around and they viewed themselves more, you know, sort of competitively. Um, I wish there were more of the, you know, network CI, CD. We just don't see it that broadly across our customer base, but 
um, it's certainly something that um, you know we're interested in. You know, as customers pull us there too. So if people have pointers, uh, interesting projects where we could do reference code, those are all things we would put in Kentic Labs. You know, our Slack bot, things like that, um, because that's sort of the whole point of having a platform is to be able to do that. So.